Hi guys, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to talk to you about a really interesting blood test that we do, uh, which can help detect the presence of heart failure or a weak heart. This test is called BNP, brain naturetic peptide. And the good news is that it is commonly being used in day-to-day -day medical practice. The only problem with a test like this is because it's being used so commonly, it's being done on lots of patients and sometimes you get abnormal results and then the doctor says, look, your blood test is raised, you may have heart failure and this can cause people a lot of anxiety. So I thought I would try and explain this test, explain what its strengths are, what its limitations are, how it should be interpreted and uh, hopefully this information will put someone who's feeling very anxious about their BNP levels, uh, hopefully it'll settle their anxiety down to know what it actually means. Okay, so the first thing to say is before I talk about BNP, I'd like to talk about heart failure and try and explain to you what heart failure is. In the most simplistic sense, uh, heart failure refers to the fact that the heart is in some way weak and cannot push out enough blood to match the body's requirement. Um, so when the body's not doing very much, when the person is at rest, the patient may be okay, but if the person starts exerting themselves, the um, heart cannot match the body's demands uh, with supply of blood. And this results in a bunch of symptoms. Uh, the commonest symptom is breathlessness, uh, also fatigue, also ankle swelling, and also exercise intolerance. This is the hallmark of heart failure, breathlessness and an inability to do as much as one would expect for that person because the heart cannot keep up with the body's requirements as the body's requirements go up and therefore the person starts getting breathless, tired and simply can't do as much. Uh, it is also worth noting that in the early stages, heart failure may be asymptomatic. So in some people, they may not even know they have a weak heart partly because they're not doing as much as they should. So maybe someone uh, has poor mobility, they're not gonna be able to walk as much to actually find out that they're limited. But in general, those are the symptoms. So uh, one of the, there's lots of things about heart failure that you should know about. The first thing is that a person with a weak heart doesn't in general live as long as a person with a strong heart. However, the prognosis, which is otherwise very limited, can be improved by early detection and treatment of heart failure. Number two, because heart failure can be asymptomatic, a person may not even know they have a weak heart. And even though they may not necessarily have symptoms, their prognosis can be significantly affected by um, um, the presence of heart failure. So detection of heart failure is important. Um, we also know that without treatment, heart failure can continue to progress. So the heart can continue to weaken if you don't get, get treatment in early. Um, the other thing to say is that the symptoms are non-specific. So, you know, fatigue, but you can be fatigued for so many different reasons. And just because you complain of fatigue does not immediately point a doctor into the direction of thinking about heart failure. Similarly, breathlessness. People can be breathless because they're unfit. People can be breathless because they have lung disease. People can be breathless because uh, they're anemic. So there are so many causes for breathlessness that again, breathlessness doesn't immediately make the doctor think of heart failure. And therefore, the symptoms symptoms are a bit non-specific and they don't really, really help in making the diagnosis. Uh, and finally, it's worth knowing also that the gold standard investigation, the test which tells you if you've got heart failure or weak heart, is echocardiography, an ultrasound scan of the heart where they put some jelly on the chest, shine sound waves and see the heart. And uh, this is the gold standard test. But this is a test which is not easily available, particularly in some rural communities. Um, it's expensive uh, and it requires specialized personnel to do it. So uh, it's not the easiest test to do. So in essence, heart failure is a very important, very disabling uh, and dangerous condition, uh, which can be treated very effectively provided it's picked up early, but the symptoms are non-specific and don't really help and the gold standard test echocardiography is not as easily available and therefore the idea that if you had a blood test which could pick this up and therefore pick those people up who truly did have heart failure uh, would make a lot of sense and would be a very attractive proposition for doctors. Um, 
you see the problem is that if you have a bit of breathlessness and a bit of uh, fatigue doctors can't simply send everyone for ultrasound because that would inundate the service the services would be um uh you know um over subscribed and therefore uh, you want to send the right people for the right test and so having a blood test which you can just do in clinic or in a surgery or in the community to see would be a, a really sensible thing uh, so this is where this test BNP comes in okay let me just talk you through BNP what we understand in heart failure is that the heart is weak so if the heart is weak it has difficulty pumping blood out and therefore there's the pressure within the heart because the blood isn't coming out is increased and we know that when the heart uh, has more blood within it it tends to stretch uh, because it stretches what we know is that uh, both the atria the top two chambers of the heart and the ventricle uh, the bottom chambers the more important chambers secrete a chemical um, called natriuretic peptide so the atria secrete this thing called atrial natriuretic peptide and the ventricles secrete these uh, this compound called brain natriuretic peptide bnp okay and the function of the natriuretic peptides is to make uh, a person pass more sodium in their urine pass more water in their urine and open up all our blood vessels now remember when you have a higher pressure in an enclosed space what you want to do is open everything up to lower that pressure so that's what the natriuretic peptides do and by getting rid of more fluid they're in some way dehydrating the patient and therefore reducing the pressure making it easier for the blood to come out of the heart or re reducing the pressure within the heart so this is the function of the natriuretic peptides and scientists realized that these natriuretic peptides were being produced and they said well actually if these are being produced if there was a way of measuring these natriuretic peptides through a simple blood test then that would be very interesting because that would point to the presence of heart failure and this increased pressure within the heart and they therefore developed this blood test uh, called BNP now this test is um, very widely available now uh, what we understand is that the, 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 these are a few things about the blood test the blood test anyone can do uh, in the community it just requires a special sort of you know assay uh, and the whole cost of the test is between 20 and 30 pounds uh, the normal value in a healthy human being of BNP is around 10 picomoles per liter. What we've started realizing is that those people who have BNP levels of less than 100 picograms per milliliter are very, very unlikely to have heart failure. So if you have BNP levels which are below 100, very unlikely that you have heart failure. But if your BNP levels are higher, then that makes it increasingly more likely that you have heart failure so the values uh, the magic values are 100 less than 100 very unlikely uh, le more than 400 makes it a lot more likely and between 100 and 400 you have to think well maybe there may be a possibility but equally the elevated BNP could be for some other reason and I'll talk you through some of those other reasons that the BNP could be raised by uh, but it's important to understand that now um, we, we've made some interesting observations with BNP which I think I'd like to share with you the first thing is what we have realized is undoubtedly BNP levels tend to be raised in patients with heart failure it is a very good test to exclude heart failure i.e. if your BNP levels are very low it makes it very unlikely that you have heart failure so if you're getting breathless and you're worried about heart failure have a BNP and if your BNP levels are very low that makes it very unlikely not impossible but very unlikely if your BNP levels come back and they're high the higher they are the more likely it is that you have heart failure so if your BNP levels are in the thousands that makes it very likely you have it uh, however if it's of above 400 it makes it more likely and those are the people who need an echocardiogram to clarify whether indeed the BNP is telling so the BNP is a good test to exclude things it's an okay test to pick up things but it's very good to take those people out of the equation who have normal BNPs because they are very unlikely to have heart failure 
What else can I tell you about BNP? Um, well, the second thing to tell you about BNP is that uh, the level of BNP rise can point to your overall prognosis. So those people who have very high BNP levels generally tend to have a poorer prognosis than those people who have low B lower BNP levels. Arguably, the BNP levels are still raised, but they're generally lower. The third thing to tell you is that BNP can be very useful in assessing response to treatment. So if you have elevated BNP levels, you start the patient on treatment for heart failure, the BNP levels should come down. And the more quickly they come down, the more it's telling you that your treatments are becoming more effective. Uh, finally, it's really useful for you to know that now we're beginning to realize that BNP is not just good as a marker, but maybe it's uh, the body's own way of healing from heart failure. And maybe that's why it's produced. It's produced to counteract the negative effects of heart failure. So people started thinking, well, if in some way we could keep the BNP in the body and stop it from breaking down, maybe that will actually help heal the heart or strong or uh, improve or, or help people with heart failure. So they started working on it and they decided they developed uh, a series of uh, medications which stop BNP from breaking down, thereby leaving more BNP in the system. Um, and actually, we now have an amazing new medication for heart failure patients called Entresto, which works on that principle. And part of Entresto consists of this medication which stops BNP from breaking down, therefore leaving the BNP in the body for a lot longer. And this medication, Entresto, has made a significant difference to prognosis in patients with heart failure. So that's another thing to understand. It's also worth knowing a few more facts. The fact is that BNP can be elevated in other conditions as well. BNP tends to be broken down by the kidney. So if you have kidney failure, you can have elevated BNP and that doesn't mean you have a heart failure. It just tells you that you have high BNP because you've got kidney failure. Uh, lung disease, liver disease, um, heart rhythm disorders, atrial fibrillation cause, cause elevated BNP. So just because you have high BNP and you have atrial fibrillation does not mean you have heart failure. Atrial fibrillation per se, because it increases pressure in the heart, can cause BNP uh, rise. Infections, burns, chemotherapy, uh, high blood pressure can all cause increase in BNP. Uh, so I guess the reason for me doing this uh, video was really just to inform you about BNP, tell you about the uh, benefits and the limitations. As I say, the benefit is if you have symptoms of heart failure, but your BNP is normal, it virtually rules out heart failure as a cause and you don't necessarily have to have more tests. If on the other hand, um, your uh, BNP is very high, it is certainly worth having an echocardiogram because early treatment is highly, highly effective in patients with heart failure. Thank you so much and I would love to know what you think of this video. Thank you so much. All the best. Take care. Bye.